Welcome back, YouTube. I'm Edwin. And I'm Joseph. And again, this is Edwin, Edwin and, and Joseph, Joseph Talks. Talks. So today, um, I'm going to talk about bees. Have you heard about the bee decline that we've had within... I know, it's been happening, actually, for a while, but... It, it's drastically gone down more within the past, I'd say, at least three or four years. Uh, I'm going to go probably to the 2000s, and maybe even before. A little bit before that. Well, yeah, no, but I mean, like the major numbers that you've been hearing yeah. about that came in within the past couple of years. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read some B facts, and um, it's just ten facts here, and it's going to kind of set the tone of what we're going to be talking about. Fact number one: there are more than twenty thousand distinct bees around the world, and more than four thousand in the U.S. alone. For much of the past 10 years, beekeepers, primarily in the United States and Europe, have been reporting annually high losses of 30% or higher, substantially more than is considered normal or sustainable. Also, one in four wild bee species in the U.S. is at risk of extinction. So, if you look at one in four wild bee species, that's... That's a pretty high odds. It is. For what we have. Fact number two. Many factors are influencing the decline of bees, including habitat fragmentation, increased use of neo... I'm going to mess this one up probably. Neonicotinoid pesticides, colony collapse disorder, and climate change. Now, in today's vet... Uh, episode we're going to talk about the colony collapse disorders and kind of what that has to deal with fact number three bees exist in all types of climates around the world from forests in Europe to deserts in Africa even the Arctic Circle which I didn't know that Dying. unlike honeybees and their hives wild bees in the US live in many different places under the ground and holes and of course in trees Fact four, some of the world's bee species include carpenter bees and bumblebees in the U.S. The mining bee and the mason bee are in the U.K. and the cape bee in Africa and the Asian honey bee in Asia and Australia. I, that doesn't even really sound like a fact, but we're going to say hey, that's a Why fact. Why not? Fact five, bees are indispensable pollinators of most ecosystems. There are... 369,000 flowering plant species and 90% of them are dependent on insect pollination. Usually a honeybee can visit 50 to 1,000 flowers in one trip. Therefore, if bee takes 10 trips a day, a colony with 25,000 forager bees can pollinate 250 million flowers in a day. Now that's a lot. Um... And something I think people don't realize because, well, let's go ahead and finish the facts and then we'll get into details. Okay. I will say that fact right there is more of kind of what we're getting to in this video. Yeah. But let's go. Fact number six. Many species of animal dependent on bees for their survival because of their food source, including nuts, berries, seeds, and fruits, relies on insect pollination. Pollination not only makes food available for other organisms, organisms, but also allows flora growth, which provides habitats for animals, including other insects and birds. Off note, you remember when you had to read in front of class? Yeah. And it was scary? Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, this is, this like is kind of too. Okay, fact number seven. <laughs> In 2017, the Rusty Patch Bumblebee was added to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service endangered species list after a population decline of 87% in recent years. Previously, federal authorities added to the list seven, list seven yellow-faced bee species, which is Hawaii's only native bees for protection under the Endangered Species Act, a first of any bees in the United States. When I read that fact, if you think about Hawaii and their floral that they have, 
That would decimate Hawaii. If well, yeah, because there, there's technically, I mean, even though they're, they're, you know, they, they look city like the way we have our, you know, hotels and houses and stuff like that. They, they're still a major island. Like, yeah. fact number eight: crops pollinated by bees make up thirty-five percent of global food production. Think about that: thirty-five percent of global food production. Fact number nine, the global crop production pollinated by bees is valued at $577 billion. Pollinators contribute $24 billion to the U.S. agriculture industry, making up a third of the food consumed by Americans. Fact number 10, which is a big one for us because, you know, me and Edwin are based in California. Now, I cannot eat this anymore but it was one of my favorite foods until i couldn't do it anymore california produces 50 to 80 percent of the world's almond harvest spread across 800,000 acres california's almond orchards typically typically require 1.6 million domesticated bee colonies to pollinate the flowering trees and produce what has become the state's largest overseas agricultural export. So for us in the state of California, bees are very important. They are vital, especially since, you know, like I said, almonds are our biggest exports, uh, you know, across seas. So just imagine, imagine that the bees took such a big hit that they weren't able to, allow, you know, to, to pollinate and stuff. That's a big chunk of money that California loses on exports. Well, right now, what they have to do is they have to get beekeepers that are all over the state. And when they do that, they export or import these bees. So all these beekeepers come to the orchards. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's a lot of money just being driven over to make sure that these orchards are being pollinated. Um, and that's major because the wild bee populations have hit, taken such a decline. Mm -hmm. Not just beekeepers, it's, it's, that's how far it's been going down. We're going to provide some graphs, uh, probably when I talk about this report, just so you guys can physically see some of the, the numbers and see how well this is being affected. So, what I have here, it's a scientific report. It was received April 24, 2018, accepted August 29, 2018. It was published online October 4th of 2018. And what it has to do with is there's a guy named Paul Stimitz. Uh He's a mycologist, so he uh, studies mushrooms. Okay. Okay. His name is uh, Paul Stemitz. I first heard about him under uh, Joe Rogan's November uh, 2017 podcast. Okay. I'll probably put that in a link in description, also the report and the facts, so you guys can look it up, so you know that I'm not BSing any of this. Now, he was talking about where he, I think, has a, a beekeeping uh, place, and... Um, so he was watching his bees go to these mushrooms. And he's like, well, why are they going there? That got his curiosity going. We had a friend that I think had a big hit and loss in a lot of his bees. And he's like, I want to try something. And they, he introduced these mushrooms and they did a lot better. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to go into this report. Now, they took extracts from the Amadu, which I could be messing that up, Formes. And the reishi, uh, Ganoderma fungi, re and what they found out, reduced the levels of honeybee deformed wing virus, also known as DWV, and Lake Sinai virus, which is known as LSV, in a dose-dependent manner. It says, in field trials, colonies fed Ganoderma resinaceum extract, which I think is the reishi, exhibited a 79-fold reduction 
in the DWV and a 45,000-fold reduction in the SLV compared to control colonies. Uh, these findings indicate honeybees may gain health benefits from fungi and their antimicrobial compounds. So they're doing tests from these mushrooms to see if it helps out. And clearly by those numbers, that's a pretty big uh, helping point on them. I know that the, the DMV, or D, DMV, DWV, which is the deformed wing virus, is affecting a lot of bees. Um, I'm going to go to the next little point on this. It says over 15 billion annually to the U.S. agriculture co economy through the pollination of numerous fruits, nuts, and vegetables. The pollination of almonds in California alone requires relocating over 75% of the managed honeybee colonies. That's nearly 2 million in the United States just for a single crop to bloom. Over the past decade, beekeepers have experienced a dramatic increase in annual colony losses, typically averaging well over 30%. This combination of high demand and reduced supply has led to an expansive increase in pollination costs for growers, you know, because they have to, you know, send bees to the location. Right. While beekeepers have been hard pressed to maintain adequate numbers of healthy honeybee colonies to remain economically viable, even with the benefit of higher pollination service fees. Um, a lot of these problems come from a mite on them that's called Viora destructor. It causes all the, the viruses that they're handling. Well, yeah, um, mites, I believe, are like a little, like a parasite almost. Yeah. Um, they, I know they're common with like a lot of house snakes. If you don't take care of them the right way, they get a form of mites too. Mm -hmm. So... I mean, this is this is in wild bees. It's uh, all over wild and domesticated um, domesticated bees get affected by this. Um, it says the Viora, uh, and and I could be saying that wrong, but that's why I'm going to provide information. <laughs> the Viora infestation, now known to be associated with at least ten honeybee viruses, ten different ones. Yep. Um, there's even one called the Vora Destructor Virus, VDVI, um, but we'll get into the DWV. It's a devastating virus that causes shriveled rings, uh, sorry about that, shriveled wings, reduced worker lifespan, reduced foraging, and immune suppression in honeybees. So really what it's doing is it shrivels up the wings the foraging bees, which are the worker bees, don't collect honey as much, and um, their immune system just goes down. So any little thing that could get them sick is going to. Yeah. In addition to mite medita mediated transmission, RNA virus, which is including the DWV, can also be trans transmitted among pollinators via pollen. So that means that it could go to butterflies, which have also have a big impact. They're having the ecosystem And too. they're also going through the same stuff. Yeah. Another potential pro problematic virus associated with honeybees and viara mites is the Lake Sinai virus, LSV which was first identified in 2010, but is now widespread in, in U.S. honeybee colonies. Now, they try to use what they call a miticide on the bees, um, but it's been kind of proven to be ineffective. Okay. Um, so when they found these fungi and they realized, like, oh, we can use this, to hopefully help the colonies and get them back to a number, um, I, my mind was like, yes, that's what we need. Yeah. You know, one, it's natural. Two, you wouldn't think of a mushroom. As being able to do yeah. that. Yeah. You know, and luckily, Paul Stamets, researching, you know, these mushrooms all the time, he's seen that. And he paid attention to what nature was doing. 
And with that, hopefully they come out with, you know, some medicines, well, f for the bees. Because um, I know that this stuff is starting to affect butterflies, and it's been affecting butterflies. That's another big pollinator. If we don't have bees and, like, butterflies, a lot of our plants are going to disappear. And that's what, you know... Now, now you just mentioned about mites and stuff that's happen to them, happening to them naturally. You know that's taking them out. Mm -hmm. So then you got to imagine, not only with that, what kind of effect are we putting on them, as far as you know, getting rid of habitats, bringing stuff down. You know, that's a big one that, not really in this report because it was over a specific thing. Right. You know, we destroy the their colonies by deforestation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next, we have, um, uh, you know, pesticides and weed killers that affect them. So there is a ton of different things that are leading up to this. But this is a, a major discovery that they found, and that's why I was kind of bringing it up. And, you know, we're, we're, not, we're not trying to get preachy with the whole, you know, environmental thing, and, but you got to realize, like, bees are such a huge part of our lives mm -hmm. because like it said in the report they pollinate flowers that produce fruits nuts you know the vegetables that we eat all that stuff without bees this would be pretty impossible to do um and that you know an extinction of bees could mean an extin extinction of food source for us yep it's a big food source not even for us just look at the, the way it goes if 70% of our plants depend on bees and pollinators and they disappear, guess what? Probably 90% of what we eat is going to go away. Then it'll start killing off the wildlife they eat off of it, that we feed off of. Um, so, I mean, just this is something that a lot of scientists and, you know, a lot of shows have talked about where just the smallest ripple in our ecosystem can have the biggest effect mm -hmm. as far as it, I mean really it's a life or death situation with us you know the bees go there go food sources for not only us but animals that depend on it and we depend on some of those animals for food so it's it's like a collapse of a, like a civilization almost mm -hmm. you know you know one thing that I was thinking of you know, if you have a patio or a porch, plant plant a little pot and put some flowers out there, you know. Um, some people have that stigma. I don't like bees because, you know, they sting people. Or you can be stung by it. I've been stung by a bee. I have too. It hurts. And you had mentioned, I, I think, that you're allergic I'm to I'm allergic to them, but... We need them. Yeah. <laughs> as um, much as I don't like being around them, we need them around, you know. It's... Uh, I, I wouldn't go and play with one. Like, I, I can't get stung. But even with that, like, I'm well aware of the huge part they play in, in our ecosystem. The main point of this video was just to get people thinking about this. Because if people aren't thinking about it, there will never be a way to help what's a problem. And that's mainly the main thing that I think me and Edwin, yeah, we, we make a, a bunch of different videos. Some are kind of silly. Some are, will be more serious. Mm -hmm. But the main thing is just to get everybody thinking about a more wider picture. Because, you know, I, I love the wildlife. I grew up with wildlife. And I'd like to see that continue. And I'd like to see humankind continue because we kind of need those. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I... I uh you were the same way. You were born out here. You moved out for a little bit. I was. I lived out here until I was about 17. Uh, spent about 10 years in Kentucky and then moved back. Um, but, you know, nature... Nature is pretty great. And depending on where you are, it, it's... There's a lot of beauty to it. And a lot of just different scenery. A lot of different animals and wildlife you come across. Getting rid of bees or letting bees just go extinct because we're worried about where we're putting up the next mall, the next fast food restaurant. You know, we keep at that pace. Pretty soon we won't have all that, you know. 
So we're going to go ahead and end this video. Um, I'm hoping this gave, gave you a little bit more to just kind of think about out of your daily lives. And uh, next time you see a bee, don't try to kill it. <laughs> um, and with that, guys, like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell to get those notifications. Don't forget to check out the links so you can see all the graphs and stuff we'll have posted up. Yep. Um, I'm going to end the video. Well, hopefully, we remember, you've seen graphs. I have the links for the reports and everything that I have found on this and um go check that stuff out it's good information and with that see thank you guys next time thank you for joining us